Some of the biggest YouTubers out there will tell you that to have a successful vlog on YouTube, it's all about the story. reasons I started the second more vlog related channel on YouTube was to showcase the recumbent trikes and have an excuse to take a video when we're out riding the recumbent trikes. But are the recumbent trikes by themselves actually a video topic? But really how many times have we ridden the trikes in circles around Beulah? So they're kind of not a unique story on their own anymore. And I think the same thing goes for the cabin up on the hill. It makes a really interesting story when I'm actually working on it, but just coming up here and kind of hanging around up here isn't by itself a story. But maybe these things make good backdrops, stages, or characters in a story, if you will. Some of the biggest YouTubers out there will tell you that to have a successful vlog on YouTube, it's all about the story. And that then is my challenge for the upcoming year. How do I tell a story that is compelling enough that you folks actually want to watch it? I know you find interest in the recumbent trikes and the cabin on the hill, some of the hiking trails around Beulah, but a lot of times those things in themselves aren't the story, or at least if they are, it becomes a really redundant story. I mean, really, how many times can you ride a recumbent trike around the same roads in Beulah without it looking pretty much the same. Not just chronicling one's day, which is really kind of what a vlog is supposed to be, and I think a lot of the early vloggers, that's all they were doing, but how many days in a year do you really want to watch me make a cup of coffee, pour a bowl of cereal, sit in front of the computer to answer emails, hike up to the shop, come back for lunch, and so on and so forth. It gets pretty redundant and pretty much the same. But there are little things that make your life different than my life that might make an interesting story. And hopefully there are things about my life that are different enough than yours that makes an interesting story for you to watch. Now, sometimes there's the obvious story, certainly if you're out taking a trip somewhere and you're going to on some grand adventure, that is the story. Or perhaps this building behind me up here at the Pueblo Mountain Park that has some unique history from the WPA days. There's a story to be told there, but I have some research to do to make sure that I tell that story correctly. But that really isn't the same as vlogging. Vlogging is about what I'm up to, what I'm doing, and I feel like my day is redundant. It's the same stuff day in, day out for the most part. Now there are people out there that are great at telling stories. There's somebody like uh, Peter McKinnon. He was challenged to eat a lemon. It was a charity challenge, kind of like the ice bucket challenge that was going around a few years ago. And instead of just having a video of him eating a lemon, the story was him going to the store and shopping for the lemon and accidentally dropping the lemons out of the bin onto the floor of the store and one rolls away and he's chasing this lemon up and down the aisles of the grocery store. He has to have really patient people at the grocery store there. Lemon rolls out the door of the grocery store down the street with Peter still chasing it. That makes it a more interesting story than just I've been challenged to take a bite out of this lemon to bring awareness to a charity cause. Of course, then there's Casey Neistat, who is probably the king of the actual daily vlog, telling stories about his life in New York. And he's one that says that he always tried to find a short film in the day, three to five minutes, something like that, that was a unique experience, and then it was set against the backdrop of his life in New York. And while that sounds simple, sounds like a reasonable thing to do, it's a lot easier to believe when somebody else says that's what they do than when you set out to try it for yourself. So with all that said, what is a story? Of course, a story can be a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but typically that we're talking about the classic three-act narrative, people call it. The beginning, middle, and end. Well, that makes perfect sense. It's also frequently referred to as a setup a conflict and a resolution. So in YouTube, people sometimes refer to that as a hook, something at the beginning of the video that says, I wanna watch that video, that looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun, or I wanna know what are they talking about, where are they going, what are they doing, why is this something that they're presenting to me, and you have gotta have something at the beginning of the video that makes people wanna watch. When I look at my YouTube analytics, 
I frequently see a big drop off in about the first 30 seconds of the video because people aren't hooked and they're going somewhere else before they ever get to the meat of the video. And that will be one of my greatest challenges, is coming up with a good hook for most of these stories. But then you get to that middle part of the story, the conflict, the challenge, the tension, the thing where the hero goes to rescue the damsel in distress, except for a YouTube vlog that's really not what's happening. It's simply something the person telling a story has to deal with and has to take care of. Now today, that's talking about how to tell a story or what I need to learn so that I can tell better stories. I don't know that I would take this as a tutorial on how you can tell better stories, but if it helps somebody else, so much the better. And that, of course, is the meat of the story. When I'm in the blacksmith shop, that's really all I'm doing is I'll talk about a project a little bit and then work my way through the project and get to the end. Sometimes there's challenges to be overcome. Sometimes there needs to be different tooling, things don't fit right. And that really is a story in the blacksmith shop. But it's a little bit different here in a vlog channel where I am just trying to bring you along with my day and share my life with you a little bit. Quite frankly, it still surprises me sometimes that anybody's actually interested in what I'm up to. And then that brings us to the resolution, the part where the hero has saved the damsel and they've returned for a celebration. You know, happily ever after and all that kind of stuff. But I think the resolution for most YouTube stories may not be that dramatic. For instance, in a story about how do you tell stories on YouTube, you might just turn the camera off. Thanks for watching. We'll see you for the next one.